Okay, so let's look at creating a PNID in ePlan. So we'll start by creating a new project. Okay, and we'll call this pre planning PID. The basic project I will use is this one here. This is based off of the ePlan sample project. So go ahead and create that. And I'll give it a project description of the same pre-planning PID. Now let's make a new page. We'll expand the page, uh, the full page name. We'll give it a function designation HK1. Document type PFB page name one. Page type will of course be PNI diagram, and we'll give it a page description of paint workpiece and say OK. So now we have a blank page and in the pre-planning section of the ribbon you'll find all the pre-planning items. So obviously a container would be usually in a PNID. I can hit backspace to change the symbol. Place my container. I can place my container connection points inside. Uh, I'm going to redo that. I need to rotate it, so I hit tab to change the variant. Place that one. Place the second one, change the designation. If you don't see these, that's because the invisible elements are not shown. We can toggle those on or off. And then in the insert center, we can find our pre planning symbols under PID, ESS, process engineering, and then you can see all these different um, types of. Fittings, for example, these different valves. And then down here, our insert center tells us, you know, a description of what these are. So SAV underscore 06, fitting general closing one auxiliary power fails. That's this one here. And we can place it. Okay. Um, also in this ePlan sample macros project, this comes with every installation of ePlan. Uh, there's some standard PNID macros that we can utilize. For example, here you have some different cutouts of a PNID, different portions of it, different general macros here. Okay, so I can utilize some of those by generating the macros. And then they'll be available for me in the insert center. Okay, so we can go ahead and close that. Now in the insert center, I can utilize macros. If I open up ePlan macro, pre-planning PID, partial macros, and for example, if I want to place this stir, I'll have to move that down in a moment. So I'll go ahead and place that. I'm going to move the just, um, just the EU1 stir over. That's what we call a PCT loop. And we'll say number, we'll give it a new number, um, and then I'll move that down. Okay, so now let's look at the pre-planning navigator because I want to fill out some additional uh, structure data. So in the pre-planning section, we'll find the navigator. Okay, and then we have our pre-planning PID, and there we'll find that PCT loop EU1 stir that we just brought in. You could, of course, make new PCT loops by going to new planning object, PCT loop, and either a loop or a consumer. In this case, it would be a consumer. A loop would be uh, registering more of an input variable, you know, uh, pressure, temperature, flow, and things of that nature. Okay, uh, so this is my consumer here. I want to fill out some more structured data associated with the process. I'm going to create a new structure segment. And the type will be structure segment general. The designation will be HK1. Description will be paint workpiece. Two words. And the function designation will be HK1. And the symbolic address single component likewise will be HK1. This has an effect on the PLC IO associated with each loop. So it'll build up. All the, all the different components of that into the symbolic address. Okay, and then we're going to create a substructure of HK1 here, new structure segment, 
This will be HW1, paint color red. Function designation will also be HW1, and symbolic address single component will be HW1. Now I want to take this existing PCT loop and push it underneath HW1, okay? Because this is the hierarchy of my process right now. This loop is a part of these different structure segments. If we look at the process, the properties of our loop, we could, for example, change the, uh, the PCT loop number if I wanted to make it 100. For example, you'll see the description is stir, and then it has all these different properties. Uh, a lot of these will be shown on reports and whatnot. We can find in the background as well uh, different macros, uh, or excuse me, one macro in this case. Um, this is a page macro, so it has a bunch of different it could have one or several pages, and then you'll have all these different placeholder objects where you can preset different properties. A good example here is the page description. If we click the three dots, we can see this is actually going to take the description of the segment. That's this guy here, the pre-planning property of STIR, and it's going to plug that into the page property, or the page description, excuse me. Uh, we could also have function templates, so in this case, uh, we don't have any at this level, but if we go down to this planning object, we'll find the function template of three-phase motor. And we could place this by manually onto a page, or we can utilize the macro. Okay, uh, so let's look at that. If I was to create a new page underneath this HK1, let's say I wanted to make a schematic page for HW1. The document type would be different because it's going to be an electrical schematic. So EFS1, page name 1, and then the page type, of course, will be schematic multiline. I'll just call this test schematic because I'm going to first place it by hand, and then, um, then I'll get to placing it uh, from the macro. So here we'll find this, this function template for the three-phase motor if we jump back over to the PNID, that's this guy here. We can look at this if we open up the properties. Right now we see the display DT is MA1. Okay. We could get rid of the question mark and identify this as a main function. That way, this is driving what's in the schematic as far as the device tag and the part numbers. Um, we can also control this from the product aspect if we go to the properties of the, the planning object. This is basically where you can preset um, the device tag of uh, the electrical detailed component. So if I said this was M MTR100, for example, let's go over here and then let's drag that out. Okay, we see that it's MA1. The reason why it didn't pick up that MTR100 is because the main function it was already set here at um, the counterpart of the PNID as MA1. So let's undo that. If I go back to my PNID, remember I set the product aspect here at the planning object. How do I update that here and then place it in the schematic? So I can right click and say update detailed planning, making sure that we're updating device tags for sure. Okay, and now we'll see that it does pick up um, that new device tag. So now if we go back into the electrical schematic, we can drag that function template in, and then you'll see that product aspect um, is populated. Okay, so that's placing it by hand. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. We see that there's a link. We can click back and forth. Um, everything is, is fine in that regard, um, but we remember up we remember that if we go upstream, we have that macro at the PCT loop level. Um, so in this case, we can actually automate the schematic. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this test schematic. And then just from the pre-planning navigator, I'll take this PCT loop with the macro attached to it, drag it over to the page navigator, drop it in. Right, and then here we see that it's placed. And you'll see a very interesting, it picks up that device tag from the product aspect. 
Okay, and then it also displays properties of the PCT loop here at the motor, right? Once it's linked, um, it'll show all that. Even our PLC data here, you'll see that it shows the symbolic address based on the different things that we defined. HK1, HW1, EU1, and so on, so on and so forth. We can synchronize selection with the pre-planning navigator and see there's our PLC data. That comes from your PCT loop. If you go into the PLC section, you'll see that there's one input, two outputs associated with this, and then symbolic address single component. So it basically is going to combine the, those single components from every level, right? That's the significance of that. Okay, uh, we can also run some reports. There's several pre-planning reports. For example, planning object overview. If we wanted to look at the PCT loop overview, that's this one here. I want to make sure that the start page of report block is set up correctly. What we can do is just get rid of get rid of the location. Make sure the page sorting. I'll change that to just structure identifiers and sort it by function designation. We'll look at the filter setting here. Okay, so we're going to get all the PCT loops. That's fine. Let's go ahead and generate that. And then here we have our PCT loop overview showing us all the properties of our loop. We also have planning object overview. I'm going to modify the start page, get rid of that location block there change the page sorting just to structure identifiers, function designation, check out the filter setting. Okay, so it should show us our actuator planning object. Yep, so that's this guy here. Okay, and we can also generate one more report. Our, if we go down here, planning object plan. Here we can look at the filter settings. Right now it's set to just loop. We can change that to PCT loop so it gets loops and consumers. Apply that and go ahead and generate it. And now we have our detailed loop sheet that shows quite, quite an extensive um, overview of that whole entire PCT loop. Okay, so that's just scratches the surface of what you can do with ePlan pre-planning. There's many, many other advanced functionalities of this. Um, so if you're using PNIDs and you want to link it to your ePlan electrical data, uh, pre-planning may be a good viable solution for you. Okay, thank you.